uh, and we start by getting uh, the, the idea of getting more and more young girls in interested in science. That's what we're going to be looking at right now. Okay, so getting more more young girls interested in science from a young age has uh, been a, a long goal of the education system globally, and uh, this has uh, been crucial in addressing the long-standing gender imbalance in the field. Uh, it's been there for quite a while. Now, as the class of 2019 starts enrolling in institutions of higher learning, it may be that the tide is turning and that we'll have more and more females entering the sciences. Now, someone who's been championing uh, the cause of, of women in science is the founder and CEO of the of Black Women in Science, Ndoni Kuna. Thanks so much for joining us. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too. Thanks Great. for having me. So it does seem though that the tide is turning, that more and more uh, young girls are signing up for sciences at universities. Mm. So the issue is really not the enrollment now mm. because of the amount of investments and projects and encouraging young women to get into the sciences from high school into universities. The challenge that we're missing is them staying from in, t in the university system in academia, either pursuing a postgraduate degree or getting into professorship. And that's where we see them actually leaving the system. All right. So I am uh, assume I'm... 18, just finished high school, I'm going to VIDS, I'm going to wherever, and I'm going to study sciences. I suppose also the choice and streams becomes important because at the end of this pipeline, I have to get a job. Mm. And I just wonder, is this something that's being considered? Are we getting the right advice? Mm or do we just sign up for uh, any science? Definitely there's a huge gap, Peter, mm. in when we're being honest about what we tell matriculants about science degrees. Mm. And until we have the conversation about how do we look at the model of science? Are we looking at it from them coming to from high school, getting into a degree, or are we looking at it from the end source, which is mm. what jobs are needed and what skills are needed in our country, and then sourcing out these kind of funding projects to getting them into these degrees. So as a young matriculant, as an 18-year-old, as hard as it is, and I wish someone told me, is to look at yourself in a full cycle. And to look at yourself in a full cycle, meaning that when you are done with your degree, where can you employ be employable, mm -hmm. where would you like to work, and also what kind of speciality do you think is needed in the next 10 years, mm -hmm. in the next 20 years. And that's very hard because even those that are in the institutions are not being honest enough to share their challenges and their realities mm -hmm. in the sector. And without this conversation, you're going to have a lot of people coming into the system doing science degrees and they're not having jobs at no. the end. And, and as you're saying, this world is changing so fast. Um, we talk about the fourth industrial revolution and in five minutes it will be the fifth. Mm. Um, it, it becomes difficult because the science you start in year one is, is already outdated mm. by the middle of year two. Yeah, and personally for me, as yeah. I was still doing my PhD, I had to learn skills like computer coding and Python and MATLAB and all mm. these systems that are to be honest with you, our supervisors themselves were not exposed to. Mm. So it's actually quite scary to think about what then are the skills that are going to be needed in the next five years. It's not even a 10-year gap, it's a five-year gap. And then our institutions, our high schools, equipping them enough. And so we can't predict these changes, and I don't think we're actually doing enough to make sure that our young people are equipped with these skills so that they are not, not needed in the market. So who should be talking to who? Mm. So there are leaders that need mm. to be involved in identifying as a country what are the skills that we need first of all without sending out certain bursaries that are not going to make sure that kids are getting jobs at the end and then there are institutions that are universities that need to be honest about the numbers that we take into these courses and saying do we need how many students do we need in the sciences in the humanities in the business or accounting sector once we know those numbers and know that we want to align these with the skills then it's easy for us to kind of give leadership into the young kids and saying that this is the course that you should do because in the next 10 years this is where you'll be employed or this is what you're going to do mm. and without that conversation then we're going to find a high unemployment rate. Are the employers involved in these conversations because they're busy building businesses in tech, in biosciences, mm. uh, agriculture, I know one area that uh, you're interested in and I just wonder if they are coming to the party and saying to the universities look in three years' time, we're going to need mm. X number of agronomists, mm. we're going to need X number of, of engineers. Mm. 
Is that happening? Mm. I think it is happening to a certain extent, although it's not happening to the right or the, the amount of scale it should be happening in. So if you look at how many bursaries are coming out, so if a company like Deloitte comes in and says, we want to have 100 accounting students to take up this bursary, that's an employment company saying that mm -hmm. you must come in. The challenge now in the sciences is that we're not having enough of those companies. And also those companies are coming in, say, at your postgraduate level rather than in your undergraduate level. And then there's a conversation that's not happening. So employers play a huge role and I think they are playing that role. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of us communicating this to the young people saying that you have a bursary from this company and therefore you have an opportunity mm -hmm. to work in this company and also making these opportunities more accessible yeah. to more young people. All right and then the black female because uh, she was always last on the list mm -hmm. for many many years. Has the situation improved in the time that you've been trying to champion the mm. cause? Definitely it has, mm. Peter. I think if we look into post-apartheid and looking into pre-apartheid, what mm. happened and the numbers that are, that are changing in black academics, it is improving. However, it's still not improving at the rate that mm. we wished for it to improve. So there's still a need of high mentorship, and not just mentorship, but financial support and understanding that these models, that we attract these young women in, is not actually the model that they need. Yeah. They need models that are going to be different defined by them and then implemented to the next generation that's coming on. So they are lagging behind, however they are improving and they are increasing. Mm -hmm. But there needs to be super su um, supervision on them yeah. into monitoring their they, they, they pace and their path in the academic system. All right, you've, you've now dealt with a number of students uh, uh, over time now. What are some of the challenges typically that they come to you with that you're mentoring them through and, mm. and helping them solve? Mm. So the first challenge is, what is my long-term goal in this industry? Mm. What does it mean? What does it even mean to be in academia and research? What does it mean to be a professor? If you look into UCT, I think they have 400 and s a number plus of academics. 76 of them are women, and only 15% mm. of them are black women professors. Mm. And so that means that there's a high conversation that we have not had into what does it mean for me and what are my options, and more especially, how am I secure in this industry? So we have not communicated the security. We've said to them, come do your PhD or come do your master's or come do your, graduate, your undergraduate degree, and then we're not telling them what does it mean afterwards. Okay. And so there's a high sense of insecurity that these women need to have and that they have already, and they need security going forward into understanding their role. And this security can come in many forms. It can come in a challenge of understanding what are their needs, financial needs, family support needs, or even academic needs. Yeah. So how do I become a rated professor or a scientist in my industry? And those are the conversations that we need to have. All right. Well, we will have more conversations uh, in the coming months because I think this is something we need to keep on the table. Uh, young women in science and what next? Mm -hmm. Thanks so much indeed for joining us. Thank and uh, let's hope that the new year will bring great success uh, for you and uh, black women in science. Thank you so much.